city of London provided a home away from home for many South Africans in exile. Even now, thousands of South Africans are living and working in London. We therefore feel especially a special connection to this city. This connection is derived from the strong relations between the UK and South Africa. These are relations founded upon a long, rich history together. The two countries have strong political and economic ties. But even more significant are the ties between our two people. These are not developed through bilateral agreements nor official delegations. They are forged over decades of interaction. They are forged through study, culture, friendship, marriage, sport, and food. Many stretch back into the distant past. Some are very new. Together, they paint a picture of a relationship between two nations that is constantly evolving. Nowhere is the potential of this relationship more pronounced than in the economy. While it predates South Africa's industrialization, our economic ties have flourished in the last 16 years since the dawn of our democracy. The volume of trade and investment has increased significantly. In just the past five years, Companies in the United Kingdom have made significant investments in the sector of diverse as banking, real estate, mining, tourism and food. In addition, 600 South African companies have a presence in the UK. And while trade has grown much in recent years, it is our firm belief that the greatest opportunities for trade and investment are yet to come. That is the message we are bringing to England on this visit. We must take our economic, political, social and cultural ties beyond the current level. The more than 200 strong business delegation that is accompanying my wife and I on this visit indicates the high level of interest in our country. We can still go further indeed in the South Africa UK trade relations. Lord Mayor, after the first session of the democratic era, our economy 
is firmly on the path of recovery and the signs are promising. We are assisted by the fact that as we pursued measures to respond to the immediate impact of the global crisis, we remain focused on the long-term growth and sustainability of our economy. We continued, for an example, with a massive public infrastructure investment program. This helped to sustain productive activity during the recession. More importantly, it will assist our recovery and lay the basis for faster, sustained growth into the future. If you visited South Africa now, you'll realize that the country has become a huge construction and development site. We are busy building roads, bridges, and power stations. Over the next three years, the public sector aims to spend 400, sorry, 846 billion on its infrastructure program. Extensive planning and consultation is in progress on infrastructure programs for the next 10 to 20 years. In recognition of our long-term development challenges, in upgrading our transport, logistics, energy, and telecommunications infrastructure, we are reducing the cost of doing business in South Africa and improving the prospects for investors. We are saying South Africa is open for business in a big way. We are investing in our people too, especially education, our number one priority. We have recognized that without the skills needed to run a modern economy, our efforts at growth and development will be continually constrained. We seek collaboration with the UK in skills development, particularly in the creation of centers of excellence revitalizing our technical training colleges as well as workplace and indeed our workforce training programs to encourage important and improvement in competitiveness and productivity of our firms. 